Welcome to an introduction to trading option spreads. I'm Sean Howell and I will be your instructor for this video. Thanks for joining. The goal here is to learn how to build a basic vertical spread. This should help you to potentially profit from a directional move while decreasing the equity risk and increasing the probability for a profit. It really is the next step beyond simply trading a call if you think something is going to go higher or a put if you anticipate something is going to go lower. Okay, let's talk about a basic vertical spread. There's really two types. There's the bull call spread and there's the bear put spread. Let's start with the bull call spread because that's the one that I think people most readily can comprehend. Now break it down real quick. Bull means that we believe something is going to be moving higher. We're going to be using a call option. We're going to both buy a call option, which gives us the right to do something, and we're going to sell a call option, which gives us an obligation to do something, and we're going to do that as a spread. So let's go ahead and break this down into the bullets here. It's a multi-leg call option strategy, multi-leg meaning that we've got a right to do something and we've got an obligation to do something. So a multi-leg call option strategy with both a right to buy shares and an obligation to sell shares with the same expiration but different strikes. Now when I said the word obligation, most people think I really don't want to enter into some kind of an option trade in which I have an obligation to do something. But in this case, once I walk you through, you're going to see that you will want to be forced to fulfill on your obligation because fulfilling on your obligation with a bull call spread will also mean that you will extract the maximum profit out of the spread. So obviously in this case, obligation would be the kind of thing that you would want to do. Now we construct a bull call spread by buying a call option with a lower strike and we call that the long leg. The long leg gives us the right to buy shares at the strike price all the way up to expiration. Now against the long leg, we're going to sell a call option with a higher strike and we call that the short leg. When we sell the call option with the higher strike, we are bringing in money, but we also have an obligation to sell shares at that strike price all the way to expiration. And again, as I start to illustrate this and show you some examples, you'll see exactly why you'll be pleased if the stock does go up to the point that you have to fulfill your obligation on your short leg. Now the next bullet point is the bull call spread is bought for a net debit. This simply means that we're going to be spending money in our account to hopefully by time we reach expiration we will be getting back more money than what we spent. Now when it comes time to calculating the break-even point the way we do that is we simply take the long leg that's the the call option that we own and we add to that whatever we paid for it whatever the debit was on that. We take the long leg strike and we add the debit to it and that's going to be the break-even point at expiration. Obviously, we hope that the, the stock is going to be higher than that. The next bullet point is the maximum loss. The maximum loss is equal to what we spent on the trade at expiration. So again, you can't really lose more than what you paid for the trade. And we know that we're going to be experiencing maximum loss at expiration if the underlying price is less than the long leg. If at expiration it's lower than the long leg, then the call option that we bought has no value whatsoever. It has no intrinsic value. It has no time value. So therefore, it expires worthless. If the long leg expires worthless, that also means that the short leg expires worthless, which means that the entire bull call spread is worthless. Now, the maximum profit is going to be the width of the spread. That's going to be the difference between the long leg and the short leg minus the debit, in other words, minus what we paid for it, if the underlying price is greater than the short leg at expiration. If it's greater than the short leg at expiration, then we're going to be buying shares and then we're going to be obligated to sell those shares at a higher price and that's going to allow us to experience our maximum gain. If you're not visualizing this yet, then stay tuned because that's what we're going to get into next. So in this example, I went ahead and took an 11 month chart of Comcast. That's the symbol that we're looking at here. And you can see that uh, about 11 months ago, the stock was on a pretty hard downfall as the entire market was due to the pandemic. But then it began to recover. 
And over the past 10 months, it's really made quite the move here. So let's take a look at Comcast and let's look at the move and see if we can build a bull call spread around here. So we've had this nice uptrend for about 10 months. Now, what I'm trying to anticipate by looking at this is where is this stock likely to be in a period of time? Um, to make everything simple, let's go ahead and pick a period of time out about 30 days. So in order to do a price prediction, I'm going to do what's called a measured move. And I did that measured move on Power E-Trade, and I, I used the measurement tool here. So I measured the move about approximately where it was in the middle about 10 months ago to where it is at the day that I went ahead and took this screenshot. And I can see that it's moved just about 17 points in about 228 bars. So that's what we're looking at here in the chart. If I take that move and I divide it by the amount of time that it took, I come up with an average move of about $0.08 cents upward per day. That's the average move. And if I'm thinking about doing some kind of a spread over the next 30 days, then I can kind of extract where I believe it's going to be. And that's exactly what I've done here. I've taken a 30-day period, assuming a, a continual move, a continual rate of ascent in this uptrend of about $0.08 cents per day. And that takes me right up to a price point of about 55 which as you can see is also sort of the, the former high that it's pulled back from a little bit. I'm looking at that former high as kind of a point of resistance, but if the stock just continues to grow at the rate that it has over the past 10 months, I believe it'll take about 30 days to get up to right about 55. I really don't think it's going to be making much of a move beyond 55. And that's a critical component here in choosing to create a spread over just simply buying a call option in this case. So let's go ahead and compare and contrast. Let's compare just buying a call, which is something that you're probably familiar with, with buying a call and then selling a call to create that bull call spread. So let's walk through the logic on buying a call here. So I'm taking a look at the option chain on Power E-Trade. And what I'm looking at here is uh, the March 2021. And when I took the screenshot here, that was out about 28 days. So this is the expiration that is most in line with that 30-day window that I was thinking would be about right for me to go ahead and create, create my, uh, my order here. So we're looking for an option out about 28 days. Now, if you've listened to some of the other sessions that I do, if I'm confident in the move of the underlying stock, then I'm also confident in buying an in-the-money option. Now, with the stock at $52, I'm looking at the 50 strike because it is in the money. Being in the money means that I'm going to have higher delta, means that the stock, uh, the excuse me, the option will be participating more in the stock's move, and that's good to the upside. It's a little bit not good to the downside, but I'm looking at a higher participation here. So I'm looking at the 50, which is in the money by roughly $2.06. So on that option, we're looking at a cost, the asking price of two eighty seven. dollars Now, you can also see that the bid is two sixty two. dollars As I get to the order ticket, we'll talk a little bit more about, am I going to try to buy it at two eighty seven? dollars Am I going to try to buy it at two sixty two? dollars Or something in between? So I'm, I'm clicking on the ask, which indicates that I want to buy. Now that I've got that set up, let's go ahead and look at the order ticket and talk about a few key points here. Here's my order entry to buy the Comcast call. If I'm just buying the call in option speak, we would call this a long call, meaning I'm buying or I am going to have the right to buy shares uh, by buying the call option. So I'm long the call. Let's go ahead and walk through the order ticket. On the order ticket strategy dropdown, I've got call, and I am indicating that I want to buy one contract of the March 2021 50 strike, and I've got the bid at 263 and the ask or offer at 287. I'm coming in with a limit order, and I'm going to try to improve upon the price. If the highest bid is at 263, those are other people wanting to buy, and the lower lowest ask is 287. Maybe if I come in midpoint, maybe I can get the people that are asking me to pay 287 to see that I am bidding in this case, $2.74, and maybe they will change their order and I can get this thing executed here. If I were to execute this trade, 
I would spend $274, and of course that's excluding commissions and fees. Now keep that number in mind here because we're going to go a little bit deeper into this and we're going to utilize a really neat function here on Power E-Trade, and that's the snapshot analysis. I click on snapshot analysis and it takes me to this screen. And let me go ahead and walk you through some of the neat features here. And then we're going to use this as the basis for comparing to our bull call spread. So first of all, I can see that the maximum profit when I buy a call option is infinite. Now recognize this thing only has, what, 28 days left. It's unlikely that Comcast is going to do something extraordinary in the next 30 days and somehow make me ultra rich. It's not going to happen. So even though the theoretical maximum profit is infinite, we recognize it is unlikely that something extraordinary is going to happen in that period of time. As a matter of fact, if I take my price prediction that in about 30 days, the stock is going to be up at 55. And that's what I have input into here, over here into my PL diagram. Now, I can plug in what I think it's going to be. And in this case, I've plugged in that I think at expiration, it'll be about 55. You can see it says the theoretical PL expiry, which is at expiration, is $226.02. So even though the theoretical is infinite, in my mind, I'm thinking, hey, if this trade goes as planned, then I'm going to make a little bit more than $226. 25 bucks. Keep that number in mind as well. The maximum loss, as I mentioned before, is really what I paid for it. If I get this order executed, then $274 is the most money that I could lose. Now, keep in mind here, this is a little demo account with 5,178. It's not a giant account, but it's also not super tiny. This account can afford to lose $274. Now, the theoretical probability of me losing that money is 30.4%. The break even is 52.74. So in order for this trade to be profitable at all, I need the stock to go up. If it goes sideways, I'm going to be losing money. If it goes down, quite obviously, I'll be losing money as well. Okay, that's the basic setup of a long call option. And let's add that short leg. And instead of making this a long call, let's make this a bull call spread. So let me walk you through the order ticket here and I'll show you how it doesn't differ much, but it does differ. And then we'll go deeper into this trade as well. You can see that when I took this screenshot, Comcast was pretty much where it was before. It was $52.06. And of course, uh, I'm looking at the same, same expiration. That's out 28 days as before. And as before, we're looking at buying the in-the-money call option, the 50 strike. Now, based on my analysis, I don't really think it's going to get much higher than $55. Because I don't think it's going to get much higher than $55, I may as well sell the 55 strike because if I sell the 55 strike against the 50 strike that I'm going to own, I could bring in an additional 36 cents per share or $36 per contract. That $36 that is going to come in is going to lower the total cost of the transaction, but it's going to do more than that. And I want to walk you through exactly what it's going to do. Here's the order ticket here. Now you'll notice that as I set it up, the drop down order menu recognizes this as a call vertical. In option speak, we'd say bull call. But when you're using the drop down, it's simply a call vertical. But it's the same thing, just slightly different language here. And let me walk you through what the order ticket looks like. Just like before, we're buying that one March 2021 50 strike. That's the long leg. But notice there that we've also got the short leg where we're selling one, same as the long leg, March 2021, great expirations lineup. That makes it a vertical spread, but we're selling a different strike. We're selling the 55 and we're selling the 55 because we anticipate that it's going to get up to that level, but not much beyond that level. And as such, I want to bring in that credit, which is going to lower the total cost of the trade. And there's that debit that I was talking about. And I'm again going to try to get this done at the midpoint. You can see that we've got the bid at 226. That's the total debit for the transaction. I've got the midpoint, which is about 237, which is what I've set the order up as. And then I've got the market side of that, which is 249. Hopefully, I can get the market makers and the other market 
market participants to sort of meet me in the middle here and I can get this transaction done at the midpoint for both the long leg and the short leg. Dropping on down, you'll see that the estimated amount is going to be about 237. And of course, this is not including commissions. Keep in mind that you're going to have a commission for the buy side and a commission for the sell side as well. So you are going to be seeing slightly higher commissions associated with doing a spread order versus just doing the long call option. Okay, again, let's now drop into the snapshot analysis and take a look at how this all sort of plays out if we're going to move forward with this trade. I'll compare and contrast these side by side, the long call versus the bull call. Now this is a different strategy, so therefore there's going to be changes in the risk profile and I'm gonna point those out. Our maximum profit, 263 bucks. Remember with the long call, it was infinite unlikely that we would see infinite riches in the next 28 days. Instead, we're taking a more realistic, a more pragmatic approach, and we're looking at a maximum profit of $263. Now, also notice that the theoretical profit at expiration is 263 with the underlying price at 5501. Now, you may have forgotten what the profit expectation was on the long call, but don't worry, I'll be comparing those here on the next slide. The maximum loss is 237. Again, we'll compare and contrast that shortly. My break even at 5237. And in this case, I even have a risk reward analysis. I'm risking a dollar to make a dollar 11. So I've set up both the long call and now I've set up the bull call spread. Let's go ahead and take those two and compare the long call versus the bull call. And let's talk about what we gain and what we give up to try to determine what we think is the best one moving forward. One is not necessarily better than the other, but they're going to be different. And it's up to you to decide, you know, what do you think is best? Where is your appetite for risk? And where's your comfort level when it comes to probability? So on the lower left, we've got the Comcast, the, the bull call spread, the call vertical, as you can see outlined there. And on the upper right, I've got just the straight long call, just buying that one call option. If we compare the maximum profit, now of course it's more attractive when we're looking at the long call saying an infinite upside. That's a very attractive thing to be looking at, but recognize the reality is that it's quite unlikely that since we're looking at the stock over the past 10 months, it hasn't really done anything truly extraordinary except for go up on an average of about eight cents per day. Of course, anything could happen, but again, just looking at the historical price behavior, you get my point on that one. Now, of course, looking at the bull call spread, our maximum profit is $263, so it is a defined dollar amount. But if you've been trading options long enough, you know the reality is that you know defined is pretty much what you get. It's, it's quite rare that you see something just outright explode uh, when you have a call option or a put option on it as well. The maximum loss in this case, if we compare the two, notice the maximum loss on the long call is 274 and a 30.4% chance of experiencing that maximum loss. But look at the maximum loss on the bull call spread. It's less money and it's less probability. $237. So even though we're giving up that infinite upside, we are lowering our equity exposure. And that was one of the goals of this session is for you to see that by doing a bull call spread, we are lowering our equity risk or our equity exposure here. Notice the third point here, and that's going to be the break even. The break even on the long call is 52.74 and about a 41.6% chance. Whereas if I look at the break even on the bull call spread, it's 52.37. So the break even is at a lower threshold. Because it's at a lower threshold, it's more readily attainable, which also changes our probability that we're going to break even, and it comes out as 45.61. So in this case, you've got lower equity at risk, and a higher break even. Now here's the one that I think is most interesting. Based on our price prediction that the stock was going to get in that 30 day period or 28 day period to be exact, it was going to get up to about $55, maybe a little bit over. Notice that with the long call, 
assuming that we do indeed get to $55 at expiration. You'll notice the theoretical probability there at $226.02, whereas the theoretical probability of the bull call spread was $263. So there is more profit available based on our price prediction. So if we break this down, we've got lower equity at risk. We've got a more readily attainable break-even point. And if our prediction is accurate, we have more profit that should be left on the table. Now, of course, what are we giving up? We are giving up the infinite upside potential. That's the give up here. So you need to make a determination on, you know, what am I shooting for here? Do I think that I, I may hit a home run with Comcast or am I just okay with a single or a double or a triple? It all kind of depends because we are balancing out risk, reward, and probability with this one. I am more comfortable with the lower equity at risk, the more readily attainable break-even point, and of course, if my prediction is accurate, the higher profit, giving up that infinite upside. So for me, I would be considering the bull call spread, and that's exactly the order that I decided on when I was creating this example. I decided on the Comcast 50 55 call vertical or if you're talking to another option trader you'd say hey i'm in comcast on the 50 55 bull call spread and you can see here that i've got that order filled so i went ahead and put that order in as my example now because that was a live trade you can see i did this february 19th more than welcome to go back and take a look at the chart and figure out exactly what comcast did at expiration, you, you can see if the trade breaks even, if it hits maximum gain, maximum loss, or something in between. In fact, let's talk about now the management of the position at expiration. Now, follow me with this. There's a couple of really critical points here in trading spreads. Options that are in the money by at least one cent at expiration are subject to automatic exercise and assign. That's going to be important here when we've got both a long leg and a short leg. We have both a right and an obligation. So we need to understand that an option that is in the money by a penny at expiration could be automatically exercised and assigned. So let's go through a couple of scenarios at expiration so you can see how those would play out. The first scenario is what if both legs are in the money. So in the money calls. This means that at expiration, Comcast is greater than 55. That would mean that our short leg is in the money. That would be the 55 call. Now, of course, if it's greater than 55, that would also mean that our long leg, the 50, is going to be in the money, deep in the money. Both options should auto-assign and auto-exercise. You really need no action whatsoever. This means that you will simultaneously buy shares at 50 and sell shares at $55. So simultaneously, you're going to buy shares at 50 and sell at 55. Now, here's the neat thing. Under this situation, you don't need to have the money in your account to buy those shares at 50. It would be 5,000 bucks. In this case, the, the money is in the account, but you wouldn't need to have it because you're going to simultaneously buy at 50 and sell at 55. And the difference between those two is the difference, that's the spread, and you're going to have your maximum gain. Now your profit is not going to be $5 a share or 500. It's 500 minus what you paid for the spread. But regardless, congratulations, that is the maximum profit that that spread could produce for you. Maximum gain. Great job. Let's go to the next scenario here. This is where you have one of the options in the money. In other words, let's say Comcast is above 50, but below 55. So your long leg is in the money and should auto exercise. Remember the long leg is at 50. The short leg is at 55. Because Comcast is above 50, but below 55, you're going to be a buyer of shares in this case. So you'd buy 100 shares of Comcast, and you'd buy it at the strike, which is 50 bucks. Now you're thinking, 
okay, I really don't want to own $5,000 of Comcast. So as we get closer to expiration and you see that the stock is not likely to be above 55, but likely to be greater than 50, to avoid buying the shares, you simply need to close out the spread before expiration. Now to close out the spread, the 55 option that you sold, you need to buy it back. And the 50 option that you bought, you need to sell that one. That's just closing out the spread. The order ticket that I showed you, what, two slides ago? Just reverse all of those things. Enter the order. It's going to create a, a, a credit in the account. And at that point in time, depending on where it was at, you may have a gain or a loss. It's hard to say because I'm not saying how much higher than $50 it is here. So you may have a gain, you may have a loss. It's all dependent on where the stock is when you close it out in the value of both legs of that. Here's an easy one. Let's talk about options being out the money. This means that Comcast is below 50. This is really the worst case scenario because if it's below 50 and we're at expiration, there's no time value, there's no intrinsic value. So the long leg's worth nothing. The short leg is worth nothing. So therefore the options should both expire worthless. It's the worst case scenario. It's your maximum loss, 200 plus, done. Now, another important thing to remember is that Positions can be closed out prior to expiration to manage the gain or loss, right? Anytime you want. That was a 28-day option. Don't feel that you need to hold it all the way to 28 days. If the stock begins to, to move in your favor and you can close it out and capture that profit, you can certainly do that. If it begins to move against you and you're ready simply to take a, a loss, then go ahead and close it out. In closing it out prior to expiration should mean that you are closing it out at something less than the maximum gain or closing it out at something less than the maximum loss. So remember, these are tradable vehicles just because there's multi-legs associated with it does not mean that you can't close it out. You can always close it out. So let's go ahead and go to wrap. Here's a couple of takeaways for you. Consider spreads as a way to potentially increase the probability of a profit and lower the equity risk exposure of, of the trade uh, relative to just buying a call option um, or buying a put option. I know I didn't talk about the put here for the sake of time, but if you think about the bull call and a bear put is really just the inverse of this strategy, but using put options in that case. Another thing, when you're trading spreads, you'll need to check your level. If you're level one or level two, you're not going to be able to trade spreads until you get up to level three. So you may need to request an options upgrade, and that'll be across whichever account or accounts that you want to trade spreads in. And the third thing is since there's a little bit more going on with this trade than just buying uh, just buying one long call option. Um, you can use the paper trading, basically, which is the Power E-Trade Simulator, and you can mock up a few option spread positions. And you can sort of watch to see how those go, close them out, you know, watch to see what happens um, on them as they approach expiration and the changes in the values. I hope this has been a useful video. Think about spreads as sort of the intermediate strategy. Um, now that you've gotten hopefully comfortable with the concepts of directional trades, buying calls and buying puts, think of moving towards a spread as a more strategic, higher probability approach. Really, it's it's where the beginners become a little bit more intermediate. We're going to build upon the spread theme uh, in, in future sessions as well. Again, thanks for joining. I hope this has been beneficial to you. This is Sean Howell signing off. Take care.